All right, so we've, we've made an animation, but we can't really do anything with it quite yet. Unless you know Unity a little bit better, you can actually bring that animation in, so it's sitting right there. You can import this object and apply the animation. I like to work in a way that's a, a little bit friendly to me. So first thing I want to do is I want to disable this guy, and I want to disable all the trackers on this character for now, and turn this guy off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into this scene, this third person library. Well, I'll just grab the first person or second third person character and I'll grab the model. So here's Ethan. Let's just drag Ethan in. Now Ethan should be ready to be. He's a skinned mesh. He should be already a humanoid. He should already be configured and ready for animating. So we're just bringing in a character that already ex exists. Later, I will show you how to bring in other characters from something like Mixamo. Anyways, this character is ready to go. He's brought into the scene. He's our Ethan that we're going to apply the animation to. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create a new asset, create, and it's going to be an empty, it's going to be an empty object. Actually, create game object, create empty. And we're going to call this, just rename it, Ethan Timeline. Okay, so this is where I'm going to put my timeline on. I want to make sure this is zeroed out. There we go, it's all zeroed. And I want to select this, and I just want to go to Create Timeline. If you don't have the Timeline window, just go down here into Window, and you'll find it under Window and Timeline. So we'll go Create, and it's going to ask me to create a timeline. I'm going to put the timeline inside my, just for now, you can put it anywhere, but I usually create a folder for timelines. Um, I'm just putting it right here in this, this temporary folder. We'll just overwrite this old one. Great. The main thing we want to make sure of is that this character, when we look at him in the project thing, that he's a humanoid, he's got a skeleton, and he's all configured. That means we can attach other animation to, to this character and have it targeted, retargeted onto this mesh. So now what we'll do is we'll go into our folder here where we made our exports. We'll grab the basic take here, and we'll pull in the animation. Now, usually, if I'm recording character animation, I wouldn't have included the plane, but it won't really matter as long as we have a character with the same bone uh, same type of bone hierarchy names it should just ignore the plane in future what i would do is not record the plane but you can get away with it so i would say if you want to do character retargeting don't record scene objects uh, you just want to record characters so we'll select our ethan timeline grab ethan drop him in there as an animation track there he is there's our character that's the way we want him so we've already checked to make sure that he's humanoid and he's all ready to go. So now what I should be able to do is just take Ethan and let's find our export in here that we recorded earlier. And I should be able to just drag and drop this animation on. And now the character will run around. So the cool thing about this is that I've basically just imported animation from the game engine and I've recorded it. And now I can start modifying it and doing other things. I can extend it. I can slow it down. I can speed it up. I can blend it with other animations. So there he goes, blends back to his original pose. And if you do this properly and you don't record root motion, you can start blending other animations into this. But we're basically able to record game animation. Now, the other benefit of this is, let's say I'm going to create another game object, an empty. And let's just put this as a um, Ethan offset. OK, so we'll put a little offset controller in there. And we'll put, make sure this is at 0. Great. Now what I'll do is I'll bring in another Ethan. So let's go down here. Third person character. Go into models. There's Ethan. Ethan's already set up, so we can just drag and drop Ethan there. Putting him at zero. So this is our other Ethan. We'll rename as this as Ethan Other. There we go. And then we'll go back to our timeline and drag and drop Ethan Other in there. Animation track. There we go. And then let's just grab that. We can grab that same animation. So let's go here to scene track exports. And we'll drop this animation on. Now we should have two characters. They're completely overlapped. But I can offset them. So now I've got two characters. But what I can also do is if I put this Ethan other inside of my Ethan offset like this. I'll just drag it in. Boom. What I can do now is pull, the, pull him over. And now when I go into the timeline, I can offset this animation. I can even rotate him. So now I can use that animation. It's kind of embedded in there. And there we go. 
And now on top of that, if I want to continue, so the, the goal of this is that I can start doing a lot more things with it, but this is essentially the, the initial concept of what we can do with this, but there's lots of other things we can do as well. We can start adding other characters and targeting other characters. So let's, uh, I guess we'll just do this really quick since we're here. Um, I have other characters, so let's just bring in a zombie. We'll drop a zombie in the scene. And you'll see that they're not quite the same size, but Unity is a master at retargeting animation. So we have this zombie character. The only thing we want to make sure is that the zombie is a humanoid and that it's generating and we'll apply that and that we want to just double check and make sure that our rig is clean. Now this rig came in from Mixamo. It's a custom build in Mixamo. There we go. So Mixamo stuff usually comes in all right. If you really want to know how to, to bring characters into Unity, it's I'm not going to get into it in these videos, but there's a lot of videos how to do it. It's pretty beat basic, pretty easy, especially if you're using rigs that come from uh, online sources or are from character building programs are usually designed for game engines. So we're usually okay. Um, I'm just going to go done. I know this character is okay because we've already tested him. So this is now a humanoid. We've created from a model. We've configured it. That's great. And the zombie is in the scene. So now what we can do is we can go to our timeline and we can drop the zombie in. Bump. Animation track. And maybe what we'll also do is we could put like a we'll create a game object and we'll create another empty and we'll call it, we'll put this one all at zero and we will call this um, zombie zero one offset and we can put the zombie in there and then what we'll do is we'll open up our timeline and is the zombie on there? Yeah, the zombie's already on there. So let's go back to our timeline and then we can just pull in Ethan again or we could record a new Ethan. So that's something we haven't done yet. So let's grab our playable Ethan character Let's turn them back on. It's going to be a bit of a mess of stuff happening, but let's press play. I'm going to run a new character around. Oh, actually, you know what? I didn't enable the uh, I didn't enable the scene trackers. So let's put on Ethan and let's go enable. We're going to enable all the trackers. And let's actually get rid of the tracker on the ground. So we'll just turn that off. Um, let's get rid of this. I think we can just get rid of this component. There's nothing special about it. Remove component. There we go. And so let's record him again. So this will give us a second take to play with. So let's just do like a zombie wandering around. Now you could use any character that is rigged up in Mechanum to grab animation and retarget from. So if you could find like a really good zombie kit, you could pull in some zombie animations and stuff like that. So let's pause that out. So let's uh, refresh. We have two takes now. So I can pick take one or take two to export. I'm going to export take two. And we'll put that under our exports and we'll call it Ethan Basic Scale 100 Take Two. Here we go. And it'll write that out. It'll take a sec because it's going to pull the data back into the Unity project. So now what we should have is we should have a, another export that we can use. And this will be Ethan Scale 100 Take Two. Now make sure this is set to humanoid. That way it will know that um, how to apply the animation. So now with our zombie, oh, let's go apply. Sorry, I forgot to press apply. And let's just drag the animation from the new Ethan character on there. But you'll see right away that the zombie has now inherited the animation of the other Ethan character. So now we can play this scene. And you'll see that they're all there. And of course, we could offset this zombie and do other things with it. Now, there's a lot you can do with how this character's animation is interpreted using the actual uh, Mechanum system. So we could change the way this character actually animates by playing with some of the properties of how the anim the animation data is captured or is reapplied to the character. But I'm not going to get into this stuff. It's not my expertise. But it is. This is just sort of the beginning. You can really start going crazy from here and adding a whole bunch of different characters.